Hey guys, I'm Michael Allen from TravelCostaRicaNow.com. Guys, we're excited. It's taken us eight years to get a real live lawyer on video. Now, I want to do full disclosure. He is our lawyer. We looked long and hard for him, so we're going to use him in our best interest. But I want to let you know he does do things for us. His name is Rafael. Rafael, thank you so much for coming. My pleasure. Thank you. On this video, we're going to be talking to Rafael about a few things, but on this video, we want to clear up something that's kind of important, a little confusing, and hopefully we can make some semblance, because if you're thinking about living down here, you're going to want to know this. We are going to talk only about the differences between notary of a uh, notary... Public? Yeah, notary, <laughs> notary public and lawyer, and what's the difference, who does what, what's important, and I'm going to let you explain it. So. You take it. I don't know. I'm, I'm a lay person. All right. Thank you, Mike. Um, well, this is a recurring question, uh, or recurring issue, rather, with, uh, uh, with the legal practice in Costa Rica. Uh, in Costa Rica, you will find uh, there are two different functions that uh, um, happen under one person. Under Costa Rican law, uh, the, uh, in order to become a notary public, you need to be an attorney. So uh, what uh, it is uh, perhaps easy to understand to people is that uh, all notary publics are attorneys and not all attorneys are notary publics. <clears throat> in, uh, in order to become a, an attorney, people need to go to school here and they need to go to law school and get um, a, the equivalent of a bachelor's degree in law. And then after that, they can become an attorney. And in order to become a notary public, they, can, uh, they need to have been an attorney for two years and also obtain a postgraduate degree in notary public uh, studies or some master degree in notary public. But uh, when it comes to the practice of uh, uh, the day-to-day -day staff of uh, notary publics and attorneys, uh, notary publics, they have a delegated function from uh, the government. The government delegates uh, the function or the authority in, in a notary public to record certain documents. So this would be similar to like the United States uh, notary in that, in that regard? Um, actually, there is a lot of uh, difference. There are certain similarities with notary publics in the U.S. For instance, when you're going to authenticate a signature in the U.S. for a document, you're signing a letter or an affidavit or something like that, the, uh, or a power of attorney, the notary public in the U.S. will authenticate your signature. And here in Costa Rica, the notary public will do the same. They will authenticate the signature. But uh, when it comes to the overall uh, competencies of uh, notary publics, here in Costa Rica, notary publics do a lot more oh. than uh, what uh, notary publics will do in the U.S. Uh, the most uh, essential uh, contracts or transactions that uh, people would be the most familiar with here in Costa Rica that notary publics do, it would be uh, forming corporations. Uh, doing uh, transfers of property or deeds for uh, the transfers of property and uh, doing uh, a wheels and uh, also uh, doing uh, the transfer of uh, vehicles whether it is a boat or a ship or a, a, a car or a plane all of that needs to be done by a notary public so for instance in the US notary publics are not required to do these transactions but in Costa Rica they are required to do these transactions and the reason why is because these particular transactions they need to be recorded in a registry so the one who takes note of the transaction uh, is the notary public and the notary public takes it to the registry so uh, to uh, try to put it in simple terms whenever you're going to buy property uh, you're required to use the services of a notary public who will do the deed for the transfer of that property and now to make the distinction with the attorney the situation is that uh, the attorney, uh, they, one of the obligations that an attorney has is to represent your interests, to uh, look out for you and, uh, and protect your interests. Uh, and you can consult an attorney to get a legal advice and an attorney would look at contracts and uh, tell you what to do with these particular contracts, even if it is a real estate contract. But when it comes to uh, drafting and executing that transfer of property, uh, a notary public is the one who does it. And a notary public, since they have a delegated uh, function from the government, they are not representing your interests. They are only working as a public official. So that's a significant difference between the notary public and the attorney, that the notary public is not, is not his job or her job to protect your interests while the attorney is. And that creates a lot of conflict when uh, 
people are uh, doing transactions with either the monetary public or uh, or the attorney. So I hire you as an attorney to buy some land, let's say. You check out, make sure there's no liens against the land. You're working in my best interest. So now I want to purchase the land. Now, now what do we do? Do we get a separate notary? Because you could notarize. You're, you're a notary. Correct. So you come, we, we're going to exchange money with the other party, and now what happens? Are we going to, again, are we going to hire another notary, or can you do it? Or do you disclose that you're, you know what I mean? Yes, yes, and... Because uh, uh, I think I, that's where the confusion is. Yes, and, uh, and, and that confusion leads to a lot of mistakes, a lot of errors, unfortunately. <laughs> Uh, there have been uh, um, when doing like a real estate transactions you might be able to uh, hear a lot of people who have had a bad experiences uh, fortunately there's people who have been able to do a safe and secure real estate transaction uh, but unfortunately uh, things happen and uh, sometimes uh, fraud and uh, crime is involved when a real estate transaction happens and because it, somebody mis mistook the notary at notarizing to be a lawyer in somebody's best interest? Can I think, explain that? yeah, when I have seen uh, a real estate transactions going bad, is when you only find one attorney or one notary public. Uh, there is just like a one legal uh, ex expert involved representing all of the parties. So the, uh, uh, the attorney slash notary public will be uh, the only person uh, taking care of the entire transaction and there's not an independent attorney for the seller an independent attorney for the buyer or there's not a notary public removing himself from that situation ideally the way that uh, that should happen is that uh, for each real estate transaction there should be uh, an attorney representing the interest of uh, the seller an attorney representing the interest of the buyer a notary public um, doing uh, the, the deed doing the transaction Generally, what happens is that uh, there's only one legal professional involved being the notary public, and traditionally, the uh, a buyer is the one who chooses the notary public, and that notary public is going to that transaction as the attorney of the buyer and also the notary public doing the, uh, the deed for the transfer of property. Now, are you obligated as that to uh, disclose that right now I'm being the notary? You, you know? Yes, there is not a legal obligation to make that disclosure. It, uh, uh, again, like ideally what should happen is that uh, if there's only a, one legal professional being involved in the place and is functioning as a notary public, ideally that notary public should tell both of the parties that uh, his function is as a notary public and is not representing either of the interests of, uh, of the parties. But the, I'm assuming that doesn't happen. Most of the time that doesn't happen. Uh, when it comes, for instance, to developers, um, there is, um, a, and I've seen it uh, uh, happening a lot, that uh, the attorney doing the closing when uh, the buyer is buying from a development or a, like a condo or a project, uh, like a gated community, something like that. Uh, I've seen it happening a lot that uh, the, the notary public doing that is the attorney for the developer. So <clears throat> there is a rule that is being broken when that happens, which is uh, that uh, the notary public needs to be independent. The, there is a body of law called the uh, uh, Notarial Code or Código Notarial and the Código Notarial calls for notary publics to be independent from both of the parties to the transaction. So if, uh, if the attorney for a developer who has worked for whatever number of months or years and has received X amount of money from that developer doing uh, that specific project, if that attorney does the notary public work, he cannot be independent in that transaction and it's not... Conflict of interest. Exactly, there's going to be a conflict of interest and uh, it's not going necessarily uh, uh, seeking to protect the interest of the buyer because he has this close relationship to the developer. So for the, the recommendation would be for anybody in this case who is uh, planning of buying from a from a, develop, from a developer or a condo or something like that, is to seek their own independent legal advice. They are entitled to choose their own notary public, but as certainly- as, as a buyer? As the buyer, that, that's the custom in Costa Rica, the buyer uh, chooses the notary public. And the expenses- I'm assuming they give up that right though a lot of times, since they're usually the expat, the person that doesn't know really Costa Rica, they probably say, oh, can you get the notary? I'm assuming, no? The, uh, 
with the expats, what I've seen that uh, happens, particularly in projects, is that uh, a, a lot of times the, uh, the, the person that uh, the expat knows in Costa Rica uh, will be the developer. Probably the developer is the, the, the face of Costa Rica to that expat buying property right. here. And it is the function of the developer to sell the property. So they have the salesman hat and they're going to do everything possible to make that closing. So they become the best friend of the buyer. <laughs> you know, it's like I have this trusted attorney. He has worked for me for 10 years. He has done all my stuff. So he will do the closing and the expat, the foreigner, who's a lot of times had never set a foot in Costa Rica, they trust that. So sometimes it works, you know, there, there is uh, transactions that work like that. A lot of times, you know, there is, as you said, a conflict of interest. That attorney is not out there to protect the buyer. It is out there to continue business for the developer. And unfortunately, we have seen cases in which they are uh, a, the buyer just gets into trouble, though that transaction never happens, doesn't get title or doesn't get the property. And in, in practice, uh, and we're talking about this earlier, that uh, uh, when, I, when I'm when i asked for a legal opinion, I actually give like a three versions of it, like a, what the law says, what actually happens, and what I think should happen. And the law says that uh, the function of the notary public and the attorney, those are separate functions. Uh, what happens? In reality, what happens is that uh, uh, there's no separation of that function. The one same person will use the same uh, person as a notary public and as an attorney. So in reality, it doesn't happen in Costa Rica. What I think that should happen is that uh, when there is a real estate transaction, there should be an attorney protecting the interest of the seller, an attorney protecting the interest of the buyer, and a notary public doing in, the, uh, the closing documents of, for the deed. Exactly. All right, guys, if this was in any way confusing, because it can be, uh, if, you, if you contact me here, I can get you in touch with Raphael. If you have some more specific questions you want to ask about uh, when you need a notary or anything more specific, get in touch with me. I'll uh, make sure you get in touch with him. We're going to be talking to Raphael about a lot of things, i got a feeling. So, but thank you for that. Okay. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you. All right, so anyway, I'm Michael Elm, TravelCoastRicanow.com. Peace, guys. Hope it helps.